Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to dive into how we can use RxJS in a Vue.js project. I do have videos about both on this channel, so you should be familiar with the basics. I want to show you how to connect both, and in this video, I won't use ViewRx, a package provided by the Vue.js team, which also allows us to integrate RxJS into Vue.js. I want to show you the basic though, and I want to highlight that you don't need that to use RxJS in a Vue.js project. I will have a look at this ViewRx package in another video though. So let's get started. I'm in a brand new project here created with the Vue CLI using the Webpack simple template. And as I said, it's brand new. The only thing I did is highlight this part in the template of the app.view file because I want to delete it. The same is true for the message here and for all the default styles. I don't need them because I won't use that. Instead, we want to use RxJS, so let's install it. We already use npm here, of course, so we can run npm install rxjs dash dash save to install it in the node modules folder and store a reference to it in the package.json file. So let's do that. This will download it and give me the latest version of it. And with that, we're good to use it. To use it, we need an observable. Now, obviously, because we want to play around with observables. So what I'll do is in my data method here in this app.view component, I'll set up a count property, which I set to zero, and that clearly is not an observable. I want to create one in the created lifecycle hook though. So once this component has been initialized, I want to create my observable to which I can listen. So I will use ops. And now I want to use observable. And for that, we need to import it, of course, because in this file, but by default, there is no observable object. So we need to import it to unlock it. So let's quickly do that. I'll use my import statement. And now the quickest way of doing it would be to import rx from rxjs slash rx. And this would import everything from the rxjs package. And that is why you shouldn't do it, because you would import a lot of stuff you don't need and that will bloat your final bundle, will really increase its size and it's not a good practice to do though. So that's not what we're going to do. Instead, what I'll do is I'll import observable from rxjs observable because I'm only interested in the observable here. And with that, I can set up my observable here and I want to use the interval helper method firing every second and interval simply gives me an incrementing number where a new number is emitted well every second or whichever time span in milliseconds you specify here. And now I want to subscribe to that. So I want to call subscribe on my brand new observable. And as you know, the first method passed to subscribe is the method executed by RxJS whenever a new value is emitted. So we get the value here and then I could set this count equal to value because we know value will be an incrementing number due to that interval method. That's just what this method does and count is a number. So now we could go to our paragraph here and simply output the count with interpolation like this. And we could now simply run npm run dev to spin up our development server and view this app in the browser. Let's do that. If we do so, we'll realize that we do see zero, which makes sense because our initial value is zero, but it doesn't change. And if we open the console log, we see an error that interval is not a function. What's that? Well, interval is not a known function, I should say, because the way our XJS works, we have to be explicit about what we use for the reason that we don't bloat our bundle. Right now, we only use the observable. And you could argue that this should unlock all the creation methods like interval and maybe all the operators we can use too. But that's not how it works. And that makes sense because you would unlock a whole bunch of things you don't actually use. So if you want to use that interval method for creating an observable, you have to import it. And you do this with a slightly different syntax by importing from the package itself rxjs slash then add, you always use add to add a functionality you want to use. And then it's from the observable part, the interval method. Might look strange, but this unlocks this exact method. Now if I hit save and go back to that page, you see it starts incrementing and we get our new number every second automatically output to the template. Now we could stop here, but I also want to show you how to use an operator. 
Let's say we only want to output even numbers here. So as you learned in one of my other videos, we can do this by simply chaining a number operator before subscribing. And the filter operator would allow us to filter the values, which is what we want to do, right? Filter takes a method as an argument where we get the value. So this is executed for each value which is emitted. And then we simply return. And since this is an inline arrow function, I can omit return, but it will be added implicitly. So we return a value and the value I want to return is true or false. True if I want to allow the value to continue, false if I want to drop it. So it should be true if the value is even. And we can verify this by using the modules operator. So dividing the value by two and modulus will then give us the remainder of the division. If that is zero, then it is an even number because we have no remainder and therefore we should return true. So this check will return true for an even number. If you wanted to check for the opposite, you check for that not being zero, which means there is a remainder, which means it's an odd number. So I'll change it back to the equal sign though. Now with that, we could think we're done, but we also need to unlock that operator, that filter operator. So we need to import our XJS add, but now not from observable, but from the operator package, the filter operator. With that, if we now hit save and we go back to the page, we see that we see two, four, and six, and so on. So every even number and the other ones are dropped and not output. And that's actually all. This is how we can easily incorporate RxJS into a Vue.js project without using a special package. However, there is a special package which adds some convenience to that whole thing. We'll have a look at this in another video.